Kyle, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So in this video, once again, we are back with the candidates. Today we have round two, so not so decisive as round one, only one game was decided, but today I wanted to show you this game. So a game between Ding Liren and Fabiano Caruana. Caruana enjoyed this uh, beautiful victory against Vesely. So in the first round, Ding Liren uh, ended up uh, in a draw against uh, Levon Aronian, so a threefold repetition attacking the queen, the queen couldn't go, go out, then they settled for a draw. I really look forward for, uh, to this match since both Ding Liren and Fabiano Carana showed that uh, in all of their games they are going to be looking for a win. So we have d4, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3, d5 and g3. So I'm not going to show you only uh, Catalan, Catalan, so games with Catalan openings uh, from this tournament, but it seems that after the first and the second round, the Rui Lopez and the Catalan have been the talk of the tournament. But okay, let's see what happens in the rest of the game. Bishop to e7, bishop to g2, and we have castles, castles by both sides, and now d takes on c4. So yesterday I showed you a game where Wesley so went for c6 and played a more defensive position, which uh, Caruana then quickly punished, but here Car Caruana doesn't go as Wesley did. Uh, he instead of that captures on c4 and goes for maybe short, sharper line. We have queen to c2 going for the spawn and now b6. Uh, so going definitely going for some chances because now you can play queen takes on c4 or you can play bishop to g5, but uh. Probably the moves moves that everybody saw right from the bat is knight to e5. And why is that? Probably okay. You're leaving the defense of the spawn, but on the other hand, you have you have attacked the, the rook. And the simple defense is knight to d5, and everything is well. But uh, Caruana accepts the challenge. He plays queen takes on d4. We have bishop takes on a8. Queen takes on e5, and bishop to f3 defending the pawn. So let me draw. Uh, tell you right away that uh, in this situation black isn't worst uh, so it is considered to be an equal position but uh, from the start of the game so this is move 10 <clears throat> we have both players decided to take different course of action and they will be looking for some chances so now we have uh, knight to d5 closing up this bishop and also activating the knight a bit. So now black will be looking for a much faster development in order to get some compensation for this exchange. Queen takes on c4 and now we have bishop to a6 with tempo. Uh, queen goes to b3 and knight to c6. So knight, so black has developed all of the pieces in, besides this rook and now we will see what will happen. So, okay, first queen to a4, attacking the bishop and the knight. So, bishop to b7, Karana defends both pieces. And we have a knight to c3. And now, in this situation, we have this very good knight to d4 by Karana, activating the knight on a very active square and also, yeah, looking for some chances. So, can you actually capture on a7? If you do, knight captures on f3, he captures on f3, and now bishop to c6. Don't want to give away the bishop and now in next moves you will try to capture the the knight and look for some threats after you capture the f-pawn or the f-pawn moves on the slight squares in front of the king. So this isn't too good for black, Ding Liren didn't play that. Instead of that also what happens if you move the bishop, so if you want to keep the bishop in order uh, to give your strength on the light squares, you have this knight to c3, which is with tempo because it attacks the queen. You have to take bc3, knight takes on e2 with check, king h1 and knight to c3. So now the queen is attacked, also with tempo, we have queen to c2, bishop takes on g2, king takes on g2, and in the, all in all now after knight to d5, um, black uh, is still down the exchange but he has earned his three pawns and he is in a much better position, c5 will come and yeah. Uh, Black just enjoys this position. Caruana would definitely like to go for something like that. But Ding Liren, of course, uh, knew all of this. Uh, he didn't want to fall into Fab Fabiano's preparation, so he captured. The best move is bishop to d5. You have e takes on d5. You don't want to play bishop takes on d5, but of course, this is your only chance you are going for. You don't want to lose now. Okay, not right away. We have bishop to e3. 
you don't want to lose uh, right away the light square bishop because you're looking for your chances on the light squares in front of the king. We have e takes on d5 and now bishop to f4. Also queen to a7 was possible but uh, yeah, Dinglerian decided to develop the piece. We have queen to f6 and rook from a to d1 and now c5 uh, defending the knight. Now bishop to e3 and now a very good move by Fabiano, knight to f3. Not giving away the knight, of course, because e takes an f3 and you are pushing d4. You don't want to play the queen to f3 right away with that idea of playing d4 because there is this move bishop to d4. And now white would be in a better position because after taking, uh, you're kind of locking in this bishop. So uh, instead of that, uh, Fabiano plays correctly, he plays d4 right away and we have f4. In order to not allow queen to capture on f3, d captures on c3, b captures on c3, and now bishop to f3. So not allowing, uh, yeah. So since you cannot play queen to c6 in order to, yeah, take advantage of this diagonal, uh, Karana played bishop to f3, so that uh, queen doesn't take on a7 with tempo, for example, and also that f3 isn't pushed. Um, didn't want to take on c3, yeah, because just of pushing uh, f3 when it's prepared then uh, black wouldn't have that much of a uh, open space on this light squares that we are talking about in the whole game we have rook to d3 so moving the rook out of harm's way and now why why not play bishop to e2 because after the rook just moves and you take one of the rooks uh, after a move such as rook to d8 this is a drawn position and dingleran didn't want to go for something like this uh, also Karana didn't want to go for something like this with the move bishop to e2 so instead of that he decided to play uh, so uh, so first uh, here uh, he after rook to d3 he played bishop to c6 back and now queen to b3 yeah uh, and now we have queen to f5 attacking the rook and also yeah wanted to play queen to e4 but uh, Dingler and stops this with the simple c4 and if you play queen to e4 now you have f3 and this bishop is defended this rook is defended so now the queen moves and actually white is in a better position so instead of that we have bishop to e4 first rook to d2 and now queen to h5 so keeping an eye on the f3 square don't don't allow actually to close the position that easily for white but uh, Dingler and nevertheless plays here f3 and bishop captures on f3 and now, yeah, uh, Fabiano got what he wanted. This f pawn is now here, and he cannot close up this position. And now Fabiano will look for some chances where he is uh, having this open diagonal with with the queen and the bishop in order to exploit some weaknesses on the light squares. We have f5, and uh, the idea is to open up a, a position for this bishop a little bit in order to give him some ground. We have bishop to c6. And of course, it's not good to capture on f5 because simple rook to f2, uh, yeah, gives a piece of, piece away. So bishop to c6 and now queen to d1. Now uh, Dinglerian wants to exchange the queens, but of course Karana isn't uh, interested in that. He plays queen to h3, have rook from f to f2, and now idea is to put the queen on f1, h6, giving some breathing space, and also maybe bishop g5 in some ideas, and now we have a bit of a chase of the queen, queen f1, queen g4, rook f4, uh, queen g5, uh, and rook to d3. Now once again, if you don't want to lose the queen, so there are, if there should be some nasty discoveries, you play queen to f6. And after all of this, bishop to d2, the idea is to play bishop to c3. Now we have bishop to a8, and the idea is to make uh, this square available for the queen, and also, yeah, because the queen doesn't really have a place to move because of this move, bishop to c3. And now I have h4, in order to, after queen to c6, you can play king to h2, so to defend also the h1 square. So this is all played, and now bishop to d6. Also was possible bishop to f6, because after bishop c3, bishop takes rook takes, and rook to d8. This is an okay position, you, cannot play, you can play this, make some threats. This isn't possible because there are problems of after exchanges that uh, there will be a checkmate on h1 so the queen has to be on the first rank there should be a rook on the second rank in order to defend these mating squares 
but uh, instead of that Caruana goes for uh, bishop to d6, attack rook from this side and we have a rook to f2. Bishop to e5 and now they exchange the bishops, bishop c3, bishop c3 and rook c3. And now rook to e8. And uh, after these exchanges of this, rook is now here and we are getting closer and closer. Uh, to a drawing position, especially after this, because now Lir Ding Liren played f6, and now after g6, yeah, it's just uh, a matter of time, because after rook to c2, uh, white is going for exchange of one of the rooks, and he is having this f6 pawn as a counter, yeah, measure of counterplay, and in the end, yeah, black cannot defend uh, against this pawn and also make threats, so we are going more and more to the drawing and uh, draw an endgame. We have rook to e4 and now this rook to e2 uh, uh, So not exchanging but first queen to e6, but doesn't matter because white takes Bishop takes so now the rook has to move he moved to f2 also adding protection to this uh, f6 pawn we had uh, Bishop to f5 and now uh, Ding Liren played queen to c1 in order maybe to take also this h6, h6 pawn. Caruana doesn't want to go for this. He plays king to h7. We have queen to c3 defending. And now, yeah, it's pretty clear that this is a drawn game because there are no chances neither for white or for black to actually achieve something. If you give up the rook for the bishop, it will be a queen endgame, something which is really difficult to win. So after h5 and a3 in this endgame, so in this situation, they uh, agreed for a draw. So yeah, a very exciting game out of the opening. So already after 10 moves, Karana decided to give up an exchange. And uh, I wanted to show you this game because it really shows how a grandmaster plays uh, comfortably with an exchange down. Something that can even encourage you in one of your games to actually look for some chances and for some compensations with that kind of position. You don't always have to think about the material. So this is pretty much it for this video. Uh, just half an hour ago, the third round is uh, pretty close to an end. Uh, Arignon actually lost the game against Kramnik, so I'll probably going to be covered that next, so stay tuned. Yeah, and I would like to thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.